Want to pivot as well back to these equity markets, fixed income, currency markets as well. Pleased to say that we can bring in David Bonson, CIO of the Bonson Group, which is roughly $4 billion in assets under management. David, I wanted to hit this theme with you that we've been hearing. In the top of the last hour, we spoke with Professor Jeremy Siegel, saying that the equity markets are just looking for an excuse to go up and waiting for any clues that they can get from a Federal Reserve. Do you think that this rally is sustainable with an equity market looking to go higher? There's a sense in which it is, but I don't think that is true across the board. It's selective. So the aggregates tend to be moving higher, but you look within that, you have a pretty significant rally in the last six weeks, and a a big portion of technology has not participated. Nearly all of communication services has not participated. So as was the case on the way down, I see it on the way up, that there's a much more Darwinian and selective, active theme in markets right now. It's interesting too, David, we were talking about some of the month end numbers that we saw on the S&P, which had a great month up with something like 7, 8%, but then you had uh, a Dow Jones industrial average up something like a 13, 14% uh, on the month, which seems to suggest that there are people are willing to buy certain types of companies, but certainly gravitating away from others. I am curious if you think that rotation is something that will continue or is there sort of a point where we get to, where people say it's safe to go back to just big cap tech or and other some of the growth of your names and just ride that into whatever the next cycle is going to be. I think it's a very fair question, and I think it's what a lot of investors are asking as well. And yet, I think history tends to tell us that what was the best performing sector in one decade is never the best performing sector in the next. And that growth value rotations, once you're talking about a more high-level market rotation as opposed to just individual sectors trading off for what's doing best or what's doing worse, um, the growth value rotations tend to work in eight, nine, ten year cycles as well. The, the fact of the matter is that if we avoid a real severe recession, you still have an S&P trading at about 17 times. If earnings only come down to maybe 220 next year instead of 200, you still have a market that is very well priced with margins having peaked. Sales growth has been quite good and yet earnings growth is declining. So I think that index investors, especially at the cap-weighted, top-of-the-market stuff, have a really tough case to make that the Apples and Microsofts are going to carry this market for the next three, four, five years. Mm. I simply don't believe it. Talk to me about that bottom line, because it was also the equity strategist, David Costin over Goldman, highlighting that earnings growth. 224 was his number this year, looking at flat numbers year over year to get us to next year as well. Where in that income statement are you finding the hiccups to get to a decrease in the bottom line where the top line still looks good? Well, look, if you get 224 and you put 17x on it, which is hardly a cheap market multiple, but let's just pretend, then you're about fully valued for next year in the S&P right now. Um, I think that you need uh, the second. Here's the problem with that, the uh, expectations of 224 a share, by the way, is that energy is over 100% of earnings growth year over year right now. And earnings are certainly going to continue growing in the energy sector for the foreseeable future. But the S&P cap weighted has a 3 or 4% weight in energy. It has a 26% weight in technology. It has a big weight in communication services. So there's sort of a, a misalignment around indexing, especially cap weighted versus what's happening in the real market. So that's where I favor active management at this, at this point. And I favor active management for reasons other than the fact that I'm an active manager. That's a pretty good good reason to favor it, yeah. but I recognize I'm talking my book here. But I, I really objectively believe that people are going to have to be selective given valuation levels and expectations for both revenue growth, margins, yeah. and ultimately profit growth. How much are you prioritizing right now a uh, cash return, uh, David? By that I mean dividends or stock buybacks. 
Um, it's uh, essentially what we do as dividend growth investors. We do believe that the return of cash to shareholders is why people invest. And so even if you're gaining value through price appreciation and even through multiple expansion, we think it is validated and it tells us what company management believes about their own prospects when they're returning real cash to shareholders. Anyone can give forward guidance to hype up a future expectation, but not very many people write a billion dollar check with that. And that's what a dividend represents. So we're huge on free cash flow generation. We're huge on free cash flow yield, but we certainly love it when management puts their money where their mouth is by actually giving us a percentage of that through the form of a dividend payment. Well, we love having you on this program to talk to us and explain through some of that analysis. David Bonson, CIO of the Bonson Group. Thank you so much.